whereas all parties were required to submit lists of guests to this event to the House of Commons Protocol Office, which should have worked with the government's diplomatic protocol office, the Prime Minister's Department, and national security agencies to vet individuals, whereas the government House Leader today confirmed in the House of Commons that the government had vetted, and I quote, everyone that was invited to Parliament. Whoa! The information confirming the individual's involvement with the Nazi Waffen SS was easily found and accessible through a basic internet search. Um, I believe you will, uh, if you seek it, you will find unanimous consent for the following uh, conclusion that this House condemn the invitation and uh -huh. recognition of this individual at an address to the Parliament of Canada, that this House condemn the Prime Minister and the Government of Can uh, Canada for failing to do appropriate vetting on this individual or having done vetting and failed to stop him being admitted to and recognized in Parliament. Thank you. Wow, so they knew. The question was for the Prime Minister. Because indeed, it is the Prime Minister's sole responsibility to guarantee mm -hmm. the diplomatic success of major world leaders who come to this country. It is the Prime Minister whose government is responsible for both security and diplomatic vetting of everyone that comes in close proximity of a foreign leader on Canadian soil, particularly a foreign leader who is at war. The government has now admitted that they vetted everyone who was in attendance. I found out, just like every other member in this House at that time, that this individual was present. Uh, this is deeply embarrassing for us as parliamentarians, as Canadians, and it is something that I think all of us take extremely seriously. And I would ask my honourable colleagues not to politicize this moment. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Of course it's politicized! Mr. Speaker, the Prime Minister is responsible. He is in Ottawa today. He can get on his feet and answer for his massive diplomatic embarrassment and shame. Stand up. That minister admitted that the government vetted every single person that was here for the speech. That was the job of the government, which has an entire security and diplomatic apparatus set up for that purpose. Will he finally take responsibility for his latest embarrassment and apologize to Canadians for this massive attack? The Honourable Government House Leader. Mr. Speaker, as a descendant of Jewish Holocaust survivors... Oh, she's just going that route, eh? ...hurt by the fact that this chamber recognized this roast. individual. And oh, I oh, am oh. sure that everyone feels the same way in this chamber. The Parliamentary Protective Service had the appropriate screening in place to ensure the security of last Friday's event, and that is what I was referring to, Mr. Speaker. But what I can continue to say is that we all must take this seriously because it is hurting many communities. Honourable uh, Leader of the Opposition. It is the job of the Government of Canada, the Privy Council Office, which is the Prime Minister's personal department, the Prime Minister's security forces in the RCMP, to vet every single person that comes within proximity of a high-profile right. foreign war leader who is involved in a very difficult conflict right now. It was the job of the Prime Minister to protect that foreign leader from this massive embarrassment. If the Prime Minister <laughs> failed to have vetting in place, then that in itself is a massive act of incompetence. Will he take responsibility and apologize for that? It needs to be done. It needs to be done and he needs to resign. Mr. Speaker, I would again ask the Leader of the Opposition to not politicize this issue. He knows just as well as ever. You invited a Nazi chamber into the House. Of course it's politicized. To invite this individual was yours, Mr. Speaker, and yours alone, that you did not inform the government or the Ukrainian delegation that you were inviting him or that you would recognize him. You made that public yesterday. The Leader of the Opposition knows that, and I would ask that he sticks to the facts. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Yes, very good. Answer. Leader of the Opposition. Well, if the Prime Minister is so proud of how he conducted himself, he would be on the floor in the House of Commons. Yes, and he would be apologizing for a standing ovation to a goddamn Nazi. Canadians are sick and tired of a Prime Minister. 
honourable members that uh, the presence in the gallery, all MPs have duties in the chamber. Oh, you're going to lecture people, Mr. Speaker? That I want to see Pierre rip into Anthony. Absence is not uh, allowed in the rules. The honourable uh, opposition leader, please continue. Mr. Speaker, Canadians are sick and tired of a prime minister who never takes responsibilities That's for right. the things that happen, happen under his watch, whether it's the record high inflation or interest rates or the doubling of housing costs or the constant international embarrassments. He always finds someone else to throw under the bus. Are you that person? Yeah! Yeah, yeah, yeah! That's the question! Sorry. Speaker, I know the Leader of the Opposition doesn't want to rely on the facts, but the facts in this situation are that the government had no prior knowledge that this individual was being invited, nor that he would be recognized. And if they go back and recall what happened on Friday, they will see that it was indeed the Speaker of the House that recognized this individual. We, will all, we were all caught off guard. It's dear, it's deeply embarrassing to this Parliament, but to Canada, and I ask that we all deal with this you responsibly. Next time? Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It's your responsibility. Mr. Speaker, it's the government that is politicizing this issue for refusing to accept Correct. their responsibility. There is only one group of individuals who have control over who has access to a foreign a state. A head of state who is fighting for his country's life against an illegal invasion by Russia. And the Prime Minister has a duty of care for that entire visit. Now, now the government house leader is trying to change her tune and say, yes, there was information gathered, list was gathered, but vetting wasn't done. What's the point of gathering a list of invitees if they're not doing any background checks? There you go. Mr. Speaker, let me continue to lay out the facts for this chamber. Talking quietly doesn't solve the fact that you had a Nazi in the House. Neither the President of Ukraine nor the Prime Minister of this country. He was specifically invited by the Speaker of the House, who did not make either the Government of Canada or the Ukrainian delegation aware. We all found out at the same time when he was recognized in the chamber. We are all deeply embarrassed by this. It has embarrassed Canada. That's and not true. We reiterate our strong support and That's not true. for Ukraine, Ukrainian Canadians, as well as Jewish community. I have to pause it for a second. That's not true. Do you remember when the House's Speaker was announcing that this individual was there and everybody got up and started clapping before he actually said who he was so they all fucking knew who he was before the speaker announced who he was this is a, a crock of shit mr speaker the inclusion of an ss member in parliament during president Zelensky's speech is unacceptable and embarrassing but what is further embarrassing is an admission from this government that they did not do proper background checks on everyone that was in the But they did. President Zelensky is a target of death from the Russian regime. His security in Canada should be our highest priority. The minister in charge of parliamentary security must be held to account. For if a Nazi was allowed in this parliament, how can we know that this government took all precautions necessary to ensure the protection of President Zelensky? <laughs> Mr. Speaker, as I have already stated, the Parliamentary Protective Service followed all screening protocols to ensure the security of last Friday's event. I agree with the member opposite in that it was profoundly embarrassing for Parliament and for Canada that this individual was both invited and recognized. However, as that member knows, and as all members know, it was the Speaker of this chamber that decided to invite this individual and recognize him. We were all caught off guard and we are all hurting because of it. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member for Sel Selkirk Interlake Eastman. Ukraine has survived multiple genocides at the hands of both the Soviets and the Nazis. The Holodomor, the Holocaust, the Siglernek of the Crimean Tatars. So it's shocking that a self-professed Nazi was allowed into this chamber by the Liberals and officially recognized by the Speaker during the state visit of the President of Ukraine. The Liberals abdicated their duty of care responsibilities to President Zelensky during his state visit. So will the Prime Minister 
officially apologize to President Zelensky for his incompetence and indeed apologize to all the people of Ukraine. <laughs> it's to the world, man, to the world. Mr. Speaker, as I have stated, I think that episode on Friday was one of profound embarrassment for parliamentarians and for all Canadians. As has been stated clearly, the prote Parliamentary Protective Services have did all of the required security protocols to ensure the security of the event. However, neither the government nor the Ukrainian delegation was aware this individual would be present in the gallery, nor that he would be recognized until such a time as the Speaker did that. The Speaker has made that public and clear, and we were owed and received an apology. The Honourable Member for Selkirk, Interlake Eastman. Well, this is more than embarrassment. It's disgusting. Zelensky is Jewish who lost family in the Holocaust. The Ukrainian defense minister, Rustem Umerov, is a Muslim Crimean Tatar who was born in the gulags. I'm angry that this liberal incompetence is playing right into the hands of Russian disinformation. Due to the liberals' ne ne negligence, the government is eroding support for Ukraine against Russia's illegal invasion. So will the Prime Minister accept responsibility for embarrassing Canada and undermining Ukraine on the world stage? Mr. Speaker, as a descendant of a Jewish Holocaust survivor, this is something that is profoundly disturbing and upsetting to me, as it is to everyone in Canada whose family has been impacted by the Holocaust, and indeed everyone around the world. It is not lost on me that the president of Ukraine is Jewish, who also suffered the same way as my family did. But I will reiterate to the member opposite, this was not the government's decision, and we had no prior knowledge for this. It was a decision made by the Speaker of the House. He has apologized. We are all owed that apology because it was profoundly embarrassing and just On Friday, a Nazi was given a, uh, not only a seat in the chamber, but also given a very warm and honoring welcome. Mm -hmm. Now, this mm -hmm. never should have happened. In fact, a list of all guests was given to this government well ahead of time and was thoroughly vetted. Yet somehow this individual was celebrated. So does the Liberal government truly expect Canadians to believe that they really had no clue? <laughs> There you go. Mr. Speaker, I have clearly laid the facts on the table several times today. And in fact, the only person who invited this individual was the House to recognize them was the Speaker of the House. The Parliamentary Protective Service followed all security protocols to ensure the security of the event. However, I agree with the member opposite. This should have never happened. This is profoundly embarrassing, profoundly disappointing to all members in this House mm -hmm. and to all Canadians. And to that, you know, we stand with all Canadian communities that are impacted and, of course, with Ukraine. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member for Lethbridge. There's just no way that this is correct. Mm -hmm. You have a world leader whose country is at war. Yep. He came to Parliament as a state guest. Mm -hmm. He was granted some of the strictest security that has ever been granted to a world leader prior to him. And yet that individual was here with a Nazi in his presence. And this government would like me and other Canadians to believe that somehow this individual was not thoroughly vetted, that somehow this list was not viewed by the Prime not Minister's true. office. That's what this side of the House, that side of the House, That's the Prime Minister would like... The Honourable... <laughs> in fact, the Speaker has actually already clarified... Look at Freeland's face. Uh, this was his decision alone that he did not perform. Oh, what a shit show. Delegation, that this was entirely his decision. Mr. Speaker, I cannot, you know, force the Conservative members to believe what the facts are. I can only put them on the table as they are. They have been clearly outlined, and we will continue to stand by them because that is the truth. Thank you.
Mr. Speaker. Thanks for watching the video to the very end. If you'd like to subscribe, I've made it very easy. You can do so by clicking right there. If you'd like to watch another House of Commons highlight clip, you can do so by clicking right there. And if you'd like to subscribe to my main channel, Mr. Sunshine Baby, where it's all Canadian political news, then you can do so by t tapping up there. Um, subscribing is absolutely free. There's a button down below that says subscribe. If you'd like to join and become a member and financially contribute, you could do so as well. Thank you so much for watching this video.